Hi Bushy community, we hope everyone is keeping safe and well. I am Susan Harrod and I'm married to David, who most of you know is a warden at the Shawl. We have lived in Bushy for 14 years since we married and we have between us five children, four of whom are now married and seven grandchildren. Three of our children and four of our grandchildren also live in the Bushy community, as well as my parents and one of my brothers and his family. So it really is a family affair. As the wife of a warden, the lockdown has meant that I get to see a lot more of David in person, but his mind is always on the shawl. I always knew David would become a warden once we were settled in Bushy. He was previously a warden at Belmont Shawl and the FR, and Shawl is his second home, if not his first. Our grandchildren call Bushy, Grandpa Shawl, and his Shabbat Shalom friends. As the lockdown came into being, David's time spent at Shaw became endless Zoom meetings, and to some extent, this has taken more of his time than previously. The community has been wonderful in organising so much online, and the work of the executive rabbis and the board is taken up ensuring we continue to reach out to members. We live in a truly amazing community, not just the Shaw, but all the local businesses that have worked round the clock to assist the people of Bushy. The biggest change for us during lockdown is the lack of entertaining and seeing our family. Waving at your grandchildren from the garden or talking to your parents from outside is not the same and we long for the time we can all be together again. Seder for three people is not the same as Seder for 25 and I will never moan again about entertaining. Although for some reason, my food bill seems to be the same as before, if not more. I work for a charity called the Association of Jewish Refugees, where I head up the outreach program and the events department. And I have been there for nearly 15 years. There are still over 1500 survivors in the UK alone, and we care for their welfare and social needs on a day-to-day -day basis. Obviously my work has changed enormously during this time and all of my meetings are now via Zoom and I'm constantly amazed that people in their 90s and above are able to adapt to this new way of life. I have asked my clients, all of whom are refugees from the Holocaust, some kinder transportees, some camp survivors and some who made it to the UK through other means, how they are coping during this pandemic. Not once have I had a depressing or negative answer. Their overall attitude is that in their, their lifetime, they have been through so much that this is just a minor blip. They assure me they have a roof over their head, they have food on the table, and they know where their friends and family are, and they are safe. They are able to communicate with them, and they are grateful. What they went through during the Holocaust is simply no comparison. And I think this is a lesson to all of us in that generation that we should be counting our blessings. I know David and I have tried to take positives in this situation and perhaps see the benefit of less pressure on a day-to-day -day basis with rushing around trying to fit everything into 24 hours. Maybe when this is over, we will all learn to prioritise the important part of our lives and let the everyday hassles not get to us. Easy to say at this stage, but in the meantime, I will let David have the last word, something which doesn't happen very often. Keep well and safe, everyone. Susan is, of course, absolutely right. And Shaw is indeed my second home. In this respect, I follow on from my maternal grandfather, whose second home was Great Garden Street Shawl in the East End of London. Before lockdown, my life was governed by the times of Shawl services, up early in the mornings to be in Shawl by 20 to 7, drop my work at 1 o'clock to be at Shawl for Minica at 1.15, and again in the evening, stop whatever I am doing to be in Shawl for Mariv at 7.15. At first, in a strange way, I actually enjoy the freedom of not clock watching on a daily basis, 
but doubling at home at times that suited me. However, I very soon began to miss the people I saw on a daily basis at Shaw and also the conversations with my fellow wardens. I also missed the discipline which the daily timings brought to my life. After two and a half months of not being permitted to hold services, we, now, we have now reached a stage where we can start talking about the new world of services we may be able to hold from the 4th of July. This has been the subject of many Zoom meetings and WhatsApp conversations. On the one hand, it will be great to be back at Shaw Services and to renew acquaintances with people I have not seen for all these weeks. On the other hand, it will be a very strange and almost weird experience to be at services with social distancing and everyone wearing masks and gloves with no singing and no kiddushim. However, we have a great team of Rabonim, wardens and executive who will as always work together to make the most out of the very challenging circumstances under which we must operate for the next few months. <clears throat> of course, we have all learned many things during this lockdown, but perhaps one of the lessons I have learned, unbelievably, after over 60 years of attending shul, is never to take anything for granted. <clears throat>